Let's start by adding a new state variable that tracks whether the user is currently signed in or not. And we're going to also create a uh, method that will allow us to query this variable. And now we need to initialize this variable. So when the app first loads, we're going to say that the user is not signed in. Now let's go back to the uh, database on Firebase. And let's look at our uh, app here. And uh, we're going to look over at the authentication uh, section on the left. And if we look at the different sign-in methods, we see that they are currently all disabled. Uh, these are uh, roughly in order of difficulty. The email password one is the easiest, and that's the one we're going to deploy in our app. Uh, don't get the idea that these are mutually exclusive. You can implement a large number of these, thereby giving your users an option of which way they want to log in. But we're going to go with the simple email password scheme. So to do that, we're going to click on this, and we're going to enable it, and we're going to save it. The one other thing we have to do in Firebase is we have to change the rules back. So to get to this uh, window, we go to database and we go to the rules section and we have to now set up the authentication back to the default mode where it only allows the user to enter and read information if they are authorized. So we're going to publish these rules again and now we're all set with Firebase. And now we're going to add the authentication method here. So once again I go to Tools and Firebase and bring up the side menu and now I turn on the authentication. And this is the one I'm going to use, email and password. And uh, you want to click this if it's not already clicked. I've already done it once here so it's already done. And then we're going to add the authentication to uh, our uh, app here. And this is simply adding the authentication features to the Gradle build path. Now, one of the nice things about Android Studio, you can see that it's already providing me little snippets showing me all the code that I need to add to get this feature. And this is not quite as easy as it seems because as we start to import this code into our app, you'll see that uh, errors will start to occur. So we just need to know just enough to fix the errors and get this application working again. So you see we need this uh, authentication variable. So I can just uh, copy that and place that right into my app right here. and I'm going to import that and now it also wants to um, uh, have this uh, variable initialized so it suggests to do that on the onCreate method uh, we're going to move this into our initialization method because that's where we put all of our code And now this is the uh, listener that we need to create to figure out if the user has uh, logged in or not. So I'm going to copy this code as well. And this is going to go inside the init method. And I'll just put that right here. And uh, I forgot to add this variable as well. So let's go back and add that. And now you can see that there are some errors that show up over here. Now some of these you just need to do some importing and that uh, Android Studio will do for you uh, by itself. But this tag uh, constant needs to be defined and what, what's going to happen here is that this string, this constant string is going to show up in the error logs and so we just need to define that. Let's put that inside since it's not going to be used outside the class. Okay so now I've defined the tag and now we just have to do some uh, auto importing of some of these variables uh, so that uh, we get the rest of these error messages gone. And you can see uh, there's some stuff we need to do when the app starts and if it stops. And we're just going to keep these exactly as is. 
and we'll put them right next to our uh, on create. And now we have uh, this other piece of code. This allows users to sign in or create a new login. We're not going to implement this. We're going to assume that our uh, app will only be available to those users who have uh, signed up with the database administrator ahead of time. But you could put this code in if you wanted to give users the option of uh, signing in uh, with, their, with a brand new account. But we're not going to implement that. Uh, what are we going to do? Let's go back to the database for a second. And you can see here after I've enabled this, I want to go to the users tab. And right now there are no users, so let me add a user. And you can see that the password is not visible here in the user panel, of course. Now there's some code here that you can use to figure out if you're currently logged in or not. We don't need this because we're already using a uh, separate bo a boolean variable to keep track of whether the user is logged in. And now let's uh, close this window up and go through here and change our code so that every time we go to take some action we're going to check to see if we're currently signed in or not. So we're going to use this boolean method to figure out if we're signed in and if we're not then we're not going to allow any of the action events to occur. So I'll just show you one of these right now. So here, for example, is the uh, agree action listener. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add an if statement. And you can see now I check to see if I'm signed in before taking this action. I'm going to stop the video here and add this if statement to all the action listeners in the app. And I'll be right back. Okay, I've gone ahead now and added that if statement to the various code blocks that execute action inside of our app, and each time we check to see if the user is logged in before taking any action. The last thing we need to do before we test our authentication feature is to create a sign-in method and tie that to the login button on our user interface. So I'm going to use this sign-in method right here, and what I'm going to do inside this method is I'm going to read the email and the password that the user has entered. So let's do that now. I've created temporary variables for both the email and the password and I've read both of them from the user interface. So this is the method that I want called uh, right after the sign in button is pressed. Once again, we get a bunch of things that need to have uh, some importing done. Now, we have to be careful here. Uh, we don't have an email password separate activity. As we decided early on, we're doing everything in the same activity. So I'm going to use the main activity here, which is the only activity in this app. And here we don't have a string called authorization failed, so I'm going to just replace this with a manual string. If we had a separate activity for the uh, login versus the main app, we would not need to give positive feedback when the login was successful because it would be obvious to the user because they transitioned to the other screen. But since we're doing it all in a single activity, I'm going to choose this position right here to give uh, an indication to the user that uh, they were successful uh, in logging in. So this is the place I'm going to do that. And now we're ready to test out the app. So let's run it. And first we see that if we try to press the buttons nothing happens. Now let's try logging in. Let's put in a bad password. And we see it says authorization failed. If we come back, it still doesn't work. Now if we come back here and put in the right password, we see authorization is now successful. And now if we come up here, we see that the app is working. That completes the basics for our authentication feature. There's still 
a couple of small issues remaining. For example, if we start the app and try to log in without entering anything in these fields, you'll see that the app will crash and that's because we're going to get a null pointer exception. Uh, so one of the exercises we're leaving to you is to figure out where in the code should we check to see if those fields are blank when the login button is pressed. Uh, but other than that, we've got the basics of authentication working now, and that completes our app.